on this first page here, we're going to look at this activity that's set up to see different transformations of functions. And so what we mean by transformations is that if you have some parent or base function, you can change how that function looks using algebraic operations within the function itself. So if we have, for example, on the left hand side, the f of x equals x squared function, we can do all these different actions to this function. And then that will change how the function looks when we graph it out. So on the right hand side here, we have all these different actions happening to the x squared function and how we interpret each of those. So for this first one, it's asking us to write y equals f of x plus 3. So that's saying the input is now x plus 3. So looking at the Desmos graphing calculator here, we would write that as y equals plug in x plus 3 in for x, the input, and then that's squared. So when I click this, it shows what that function looks like. So it is now we can see the new one, the blue one is shifted left. And if we zoom in, we can see by how much it's shifted left. Well, it's shifted to the left by three. So that's how we go from the original in the red to the new one when we say x plus three on the inside, it shifts left three. And then if we look at x minus two, so that's on the left hand side here, saying that we're looking at y equals f of x minus 2. So it's saying the input is x minus 2. And then we see what is the output or what does the graph look like when we take a look at x minus 2 squared. Click that one and we can see if we zoom in that shifted now from the original in the red it shifted to the right by 2. So when we change those inputs when we add or subtract to the inputs it does this left and right shifting, which makes sense because x is describing left and right distance. So when you affect that left and right distance, then that means you're going to be shifting or sliding the graph left to right. Let's empty those and now let's look at c and d here. These ones are similar because now we're adding to the outside of the function. So you have y equals f of x, so that's the x squared, plus Three. So we're adding 3 to the x squared function. So when we click that one, we can see what happens here. This is the new graph. And if we zoom in, we can see that from the original graph, it was shifted up to the purple one. So it's shifted up by 3. So that's what x squared plus 3 looks like. And the next one, if we do f of x minus 2, so we're taking f of x, which is x squared, and we're subtracting 2 on the outside. This now will give us, click on that, and that is shifted, if we zoom in, down negative 2. So it's shifted down by 2. So we can see in the outputs here, when we add or subtract to the outputs, well, the outputs are describing the heights, the up and down values of a graph, the outputs. And when we add or subtract to the outputs, that's changing that's adding or subtracting, shifting those outputs of so those heights. And so now when we clear those and we look at the next one, which is y is equal to f of negative x. So we have y is equal to f of negative x. That's saying your new input is negative x. So we have negative x squared and that's in parentheses. And we click that. Well, that's actually the same graph, which makes sense because if you take negative x squared, well, a negative times a negative is a positive, so that gives you positive x squared. So there's not much that actually changes on this one when we put a negative on the input. And now let's take a look at when we put a negative on the output. So instead of saying negative x quantity squared, we're now doing negative x squared. So the negative is on the outside here. So on the inside, that's saying you're putting a negative on the x values. On the outside, you're putting the negative on the y values or the outputs. So you can see what it does is it sort of does this reflection or flipping over the x-axis. It's making all the y values negative. You see on the regular function we have this point one one 
And then on the new function, we have this point one negative one. So it went from one one to one negative one. So it's turning the y values into a negative. Clear those. Now let's take a look at the next ones here. Where we're multiplying on the outside here. So the first one is we have two x squared and the other one is one third x squared. So we're multiplying on the outside. You can see that in the expression here, two times f of x. Two is on the outside, f of x, remember that is x squared. So two times x squared. Let's say, take a look at what that looks like. And we can see it's sort of, there's, there's no shifting or flipping going on. It's kind of the same bottom point here at zero, zero. But the difference is, is that it's sort of within or inside, it's kind of taller or steeper than the original function. And then if we take a look at one third x squared, so we're multiplying all the output values by one third, now that gets wider or flattens. So if we take a look at the actual output values, here on the original in the red, we have the output value of one one, and then on the blue, we have the output value of one two. And so we see we went from one, one to one, two. So we multiplied the output value by two. And that's exactly what's happening in the algebra here or in the arithmetic. And similarly, if we take a look at the new one here, um, it'll be easier to take a look at a bigger point. So let's say three, nine. Here, if we look at this point, three, nine on the original, if we look at the same X value, on the green here, which is the one third x squared at three, the output value is three. So it went from three, nine to three, three. So you multiply the output or the y value by one third, or you divide it by three. So you went from nine to three. Let's clear those. Now let's take a look at multiplying on the inside or on the inputs. Let's open those up. And it does actually kind of the same thing um, sort of just at a steeper or a different level. So these ones are more extreme steepness and more wide. And we'll talk about the difference between these last couple pairs that with multiplying, but they essentially kind of do the same thing. One of the most important things to keep in mind when we're looking at transformations and how to determine what is happening in a transformation is to see where is the operation happening? Is it happening on the inside with the X's or is it happening on the outside with the Y's? So that's the first question we have to ask is to if it's happening to the input or the inside, the function or to the output, the outside, the function. And if we can answer that question, that can tell us a lot about what's happening in the transformation. For example, if we have the parent function x squared again, and we're looking at the transformation or the new function that says y equals f of x on the outside plus two. So we're adding two to the output of the function because f of x is the output. So you have f of x and you add two to f of x. That's the output of the function. And when we write that actually out, we saw this earlier. This is x squared plus two. However, the difference on this other one is we're adding on the inside of the parentheses. It's adding with the x's. So when we add two, we're adding two to the input of the function. And this looks like y equals x plus two, that entire quantity squared. This is essentially saying f of x plus two, your new input is x plus two. And that actually changes the function as we saw earlier. So we explored through Desmos graphing calculator what these different transformations can do. Now let's write them down more concretely or well defined. So if we have y equals f of x plus h, h is just some number. In this case, we're going to be using other numbers like a, b, h, and k. Those are all real numbers. So what we do here is we're adding on the inside. And what this does, if you think back to the Desmos calculator on the last page, this is shifting left by H. 
H is that value that you're adding on the inside. And if you remember, when you add on the inside, that shifts to the left, rather than, you, you know, you would think if you're adding to the X's, you would shift right, because going to the right is increasing numbers on the number line. But in fact, on the inside, it does the opposite. It shifts to the left when you add, and then to the right when you subtract. So this is a shift right by H. And then when we added or subtracted, say this value K, just some number, that affected the outputs. And it was a very direct relationship where if you add K, then you shifted up by K. If you subtracted K, you shifted down by K. So these adding or subtracting to the outputs are shift up or shift down. And then when we put a negative on the inside, we actually weren't able to see this on the x squared function on the last page, because when you put a negative on the inside of the x squared function, you're doing negative x squared, which gives you a positive because you're doing negative x times negative x. But what this really does is making all the x values negative. If you make all the x values negative, remember x values is left and right. So if you have a point on the right here with a positive x value, it then becomes a negative x value with the same number, but it's just negative. And then the y value stays the same. So what you're doing is you're kind of flipping or reflecting over that y axis, if you think of it as like a number line. So this is a reflection over y axis. And then similarly, when we have negative on the outside, you're making all the y values or all the outputs negative. So this does a reflection over the x axis. So if you have some positive y values, then they keep the same x value, but then the y value becomes negative. So it goes down, it flips over the x axis. So this is a reflection over x axis. And then when we multiplied on the outside of the function, like y equals 3x squared or y equals 0.1x squared, the graph did a couple different things depending on what that multiplying number was. So we multiplied by 2 on the last page or with the x squared function. It made the graph sort of skinnier or it amplified those y values. So on the original, there was a 0.11. That point became 1, 2. So you multiply the y values by whatever that a factor is. So if that a factor or that a constant is bigger than one, it makes the y values bigger. Right? You multiply by two, you get a number that's bigger than what you started with. So this is what we call a vertical stretch because we're stretching or making all the y values bigger, but the x values are essentially staying the same. And we'd say it's a vertical stretch by A. And then on the other hand, when you're multiplying by something that is like a fraction, so something between 0 and 1, or its absolute value is less than 1, like 0.1 or the 1 third on the example that we looked at earlier, the outputs are multiplied by a number that will make it smaller. So if you had, on the example before, an output of 9 that turned into an output of three because you divided it by three. So you're kind of compressing down this graph and it's becoming kind of squished in a way. So this is a vertical compression by A. And in fact, these multiplications on the inside by some factor, say B, they sort of behave or do the same thing as the multiplications on the outside. So we don't really need to define these right now because you can always turn the multiplications on the inside to some multiplications on the outside. For example, this is the same thing as 4x squared. This is the same as 0.49x squared. So these multiplications on the inside can always be related to some multiplication on the outside like above. So it's all really vertical stretching or vertical compression, depending on what that multiplying value is.
So in general, and this is one of the most important things to take away from this, and you should always ask yourself, are the operations happening on the inside with the inputs? Or are the operations happening on the outside with the outputs? If they're happening on the inside with the inputs, then the graph changes horizontally. And on the other hand, if you answer the question and say the operations happening to the outputs, then the graph changes vertically. So we can look at a couple examples of the squaring function, the x squared parent, and see what the different transformations would do to this, and in fact, see the order that we would do it in. So in general, we follow the order of operations. We follow PEMDAS, which remember says do parentheses first, and then exponents, then multiplication and division, and then addition and subtraction. So we usually don't have exponents with our transformations. So you want to look at parentheses, look on the inside, the in what's affecting the inputs first. And then you look at the outside, what's affecting the y's. And so when you look at what's affecting the y's or on the outsides, then you do multiplication and division first, and then addition subtraction last. But with transformations, we have to make sure to do the horizontal shifts first. So if you're dealing with the inputs, you want to look at the horizontal shifts before you look at the reflections on, on the x's. So let's take a look at a couple examples. For this first one, we have x minus 2 quantity squared plus 3 on the outside. So order of operations, parentheses first, look on the inside. We always deal with the horizontal shifts first. So here the horizontal shift here is minus two. So that tells us if we refer back to the rules that we listed out, when we say x minus two on the input, that's telling us to shift to the right by two. So this is the first thing we do here. So this is one, we shift right two. And then the only other thing happening here is the adding to the outside, the plus three on the outside. So that's happening on the outside. It's affecting the outputs or it's affecting the graph vertically. So here we now shift up by three. And on the next one, it's very similar, but there's another factor in here. So first, same thing, we always do the horizontal shifts first. So on the inside with the inputs, we have a plus two that does a shift left two. And then on the outsides now, we're affecting the outputs, follow regular order of operations. Though 0 0.4 is multiplying, the minus three well is subtracting. So we do the multiplication first, two here. So this is next up the multiplication by the 0 0.4. Since 0 0.4 is less than one, it's a compression. If you take a number and multiply it by 0 0.4, you're going to get a smaller number. So this is a vertical compression by 0.4. And then lastly, we have the subtracting 3 on the outside. You're subtracting 3 to the outputs, so you're shifting down vertically by 3. So we'd say shift down 3. And then lastly, we have this guy, which has uh, a little bit more. It's all very similar, but we're just adding a little bit each time. So first, again, you deal with the horizontal shifting. So you have x plus 2. It's a plus, so you're going left. And 2 tells us how much we're going left. So we're going left 2. And then next, we want to look at now the outside. There's nothing else on the inside for us. On the outside, we have the adding 3, and then we have the multiplying by negative 2. And here, this is telling us order of operations, do the multiplication first, that's the negative 2. But the negative and the 2 do two different things. There's kind of two transformations embedded within this negative 2. 
So let's talk about the negative first. A negative on the outside, it makes all the y values negative. So it flips the graph upside down, which is a reflection over the x-axis. So this part here is both 2 and 3. And it's a reflection, or we'd say reflect over x-axis. And then next, the 2, what it's doing on the outside is multiplying. It's multiplying on the outside, so it is some sort of vertical stretch or compression. 2 is bigger than 1, so that makes the y values bigger, so it's a vertical stretch. By 2. And then lastly, we have the adding of the 3 once again. So that is adding to the outputs. So you're saying a shift up by 3. 